Alright, this is Compulsion with a long overdue video on a toy I bought a few months ago. Been working on this for a long time, kind of got distracted from, you know, making the original video, and now I'm actually putting it all together after the edits and everything else. So what I went and bought was a 44 Magnum Desert Eagle with the polished chrome finish, doing just a quick safety check, empty chamber, empty mag, no ammo on the table. So this is uh, the gun that came in that nice hard case that it, uh, I just showed you right there. You can see it's got a nice mirror-like finish. I keep it, you know, shined up with a silicone rag between range sessions. It's a uh, kind of a ridiculous thing I got for fun. I hadn't bought a gun in about a year, and I just felt like doing something a little crazy since all my base needs are met and I've got a gun in every category I need. So just showing you here, this thing uses a kind of AR style bolt and a gas system with direct impingement style versus a typical gas blowback system you'd see in a semi-automatic pistol. So you can see the whole thing is polished chrome. These come in various finishes. I went with this one because it should be resilient to wear and I couldn't to bear to get the titanium nitride finish that was gold. So I'm showing you here, there's some as cast surfaces that you can see if you really kind of poke around. But overall, you've got a real nice, high quality finish. There's another cast surface. And you know, it doesn't really matter. It looks like it's, uh, I, couldn't tell if, I couldn't tell if it was sand or investment cast. So one of the things I got was, I bought this from Reg Trading Post. They gave me a good deal on Gun Broker. It comes with a CD and also a little flyer that shows you some things. So not that you're supposed to be able to read it here, but it tells you some specific ammunition loads that will work in the gun. As far as it talks about stance and essentially not limb bristing, because this gun is very susceptible to that. So, we talked about that rifle style bolt. If you're familiar with the AR 15, you can kind of recognize some of that. So, here you can see in the center on the left that cylinder is the ejector. There's also this other part that's part of the bolt used for disassembly. I'm not going to take it apart here because the manual tells you how to do that. So, there's the ejector right there that actually beats up the brass, and there's the extractor. So, talking some details about the gun, it is pretty heavy, 66 and a half ounces, unloaded. Size-wise, trying to figure out a good comparison, so what I did was is I took a string and wrapped it around the handle. That string was 6.5 inches long wrapped around the circumference of the grip so you can kind of get an idea of how big your current pistols are. Overall we've got about roughly 10 inches long and about a little less than 7 inches high. I didn't measure the thickness, it's thick. People compare it to a 2x4. So comparison wise I've got a 5 inch 1911 government with some aftermarket grips and a magwell. It's a Dawson uh, precision magwell and some rubberized grips. So a little bigger than a typical 1911, you can see this gun dwarfs it. And just for reference, these other guns were already safety checked off camera. So I've got an XD 4 XDM 4.5. You can see again, this just dwarfs completely, even with the double stacked 9mm. And finally, the USP Tactical. Don't remember the barrel size here, it's got a streamlight laser light combo on the bottom. This is just a huge gun too. If you can see the Desert Eagle still dwarfing an already pretty big gun. So just to get an idea, I usually wear about large or extra large gloves. The width of my knuckles is about three and a half, three and three quarters inches. And you know, right here, if I try to stretch my finger out all the way, I'm getting to a little over seven and a half inches. So just to get an idea, hand size, if you can't get one of these, um, you know, in hand at a local dealer, based on my measurements, you might be able to get a rough idea on how your hand would fit with a pistol. So you can see right there where my fingertips get to on that ridiculously wide grip. Again, the fingertip distance back on the USP Tactical. Again, on the XDM and 9mm, and you can see that goes back pretty far. And then the 1911 with the rubberized grips, you can see about how far back they get. And again, this is just kind of a comparison, just so you can get an idea of, of the size of this gun. So that's a double stack 9mm up against to it. That's a double stack 45 that holds 12. Or I'm sorry, I said that backwards. Slide resistance. So as this bolt goes in and locks in the lugs, 
there's a little bit of resistance that you can see and I'm trying to show you just at the end so you can see right there this gun came from the factory with a grease that wasn't very good and I didn't uh, lubricate the bolt very well when I first got it and that caused some jamming issues so after you get that bad grease out and then put your good grease in I personally prefer slip 2000 EWL it worked a lot better so here you can see the ejector damage on the brass these were loaded pretty hot so it is going to mar it up when it flings that brass out so now I've got a bullet size comparison 9mm followed by 45 ACP followed by 357 Magnum 44 Magnum 223 and then 308 Winchester so you can see this is you know decent round this is typically a revolver round so that's next to 357. I apologize on the quality. This is my older camera that I replaced. You can see it's just overall a big, heavy bullet. So let's jump to some range, range time. I did a comparison with the recoil versus a 357 Magnum with about factory loads. And I started off with the only ammo I could get my hands on, which was some factory ammo from a small oh, shop. It ended up being really light. So it didn't even fully cycle the gun. It was so light. It felt you know, almost, it felt like a toy to be honest. It was to the point where it was almost encouraging unsafe range practices because I could just, I didn't even feel like it was a gun. That's how light it was. Especially with the weighted gun and the gas system. I actually fired it one handed a couple times just for funsies. So I was trying to do a recoil comparison to see, you know, how a 44 Magnum with this gas system would be versus a 357 Magnum. And you'll see that a little bit later. Grip it any tighter. So here's again the 357 with factory loads, and this time with some rather hot uh, 44 Magnum that I loaded myself. This is a little bit over the Hornady tables. So here, this is where I start to have some jam issues. It's now actually fully cycling. What I found out was happening is I was hitting the slide release up a little bit with my thumb. So I can show you later. That's that's the fix for this, but it was a very weird jam. I've never seen it anything like that before. And this is just kind of a little intricacy of the gun. They're kind of finicky. They're not oiled properly, not broken in a little bit, don't have hot rounds. They can just kind of be a nightmare. It's really frustrating me for a couple of weeks. So the slide release we talked about, this goes out way further than a typical gun. Normally with a pistol you choke up on it pretty high. So when you do that with this one, your thumb may be bumping up against that. Just doing it a little bit can cause some problems. So you can see the slide release right there. So now when I adjusted it, you know, no problems. And then if I go back to that slightly tighter position, instantly fails to cycle forward. Then once you go back to doing it, you know, with that lowered grip, you're good to go. So that's what was causing me problems. Here's a recoil comparison, side by side with hot magnum, excuse me, hot 44 magnum, normal 357. So the recoil is pretty much not any worse or marginally more. All right, so talking about that grip again that we just showed you. So this is a, you know, typical thumb over grip. I'm trying to show this the best I can. It's really awkward to do under the camera. So typically that's how I hold the gun. I've, I've experimented with thumbs forward a little bit, but it's not my typical grip, even though it seems to be better for competition shooting. So normally the worst thing you have to worry about is not having a good enough grip. But with this, you have to worry about jamming the actual gun. So if you hold your hand like this, or if you do thumbs forward especially, where you can push your top thumb up, just be careful. That's, that's where my problem was, and it wasn't very easy to diagnose, because I've never had a gun jam up like this before. Just, like I said, really, maybe this is obvious to you, but to me it was completely weird. This is the, uh, you know, final glamour shots of the gun. It's something I like. It was a bit pricier than I like. Originally, I was thinking about buying one of these when I thought they were grand. It turned out they were, you know, around 1500 or more. It's, you know, a fun thing. You can easily convert the 44 Magnum into 50 AE with a barrel swap, which is about a 450 or $500 part. You know, realistically, this is a range gun. It's, it's for fun. I don't think it's some carry gun. I'm not one of those crazy people. I am looking forward to taking it to a bowling pin match and putting a red dot on it. That's it, and thanks for watching.